What would you do if doctors told you that your newborn child would not be able to walk, to hear, to talk, or to speak? What kind of action would you take? My husband and I decided to come to the United States of America 10 days after September the 11th. We came to save the life of our son, but also, amazingly, to rediscover my purpose. You see, purpose is something really extraordinary. It's something hard to find, but easy to discover in times of crisis, in times of vulnerability, in times of stress and distress, and perhaps in the darkest corners of our existence. I thought I knew who I was before I came to the United States. I was an empowered woman. I was an empowered woman until I arrived in this country. Within 24 hours, I lost my identity. I lost my voice. This tongue that can speak to you today could not make sense, could not connect with you. There was this extraordinary ocean between you and I, and I felt that in my bones. And I wanted to be like you. I wanted to be part of this country. I wanted to be part of this culture. I wanted to make sense so badly that this prompted me to find that voice within, to find that purpose, to move myself to action. Don't think this was easy. This was a journey of self-discovery and of self-invention and reinvention again and again. I thought, I knew who I was when I was 20, when I started to work in media in my country, Romania. I thought that I knew who I was when I was 22, when I was banned from practicing journalists because I believe in human rights, in street children's rights, in orphans. I believe in opportunity for all. Yet, when I came to this country, I lost all that within hours, probably seconds. And it was so difficult and it was so traumatic that I could not stop but wonder, are there any other women out there like me seeking for help, looking for a community of support, for a place that they can call home? Is there anybody out there that is like me, crying to belong, crying to make sense of this new identity? I did not choose to be an immigrant. In fact, I had no idea what an immigrant was until I passed the border and I got a label on my phone. <laughs> Alien. <laughs> well, I didn't have a problem with that, to be quite honest, because I thought it was funny. But the many women that I've met after me, the women that I work today with, they really thought it was insulting. In fact, a lot of women today say, Marga, why do you always say Empowered Women International creates opportunity for immigrant and refugee women? Why can you not call us Americans? And it's so true that we are perhaps more Americans than a lot of American people that I know. We believe in this country. We belong so badly. We are part of the fiber of this country. Yet, you know what? There is this immigrant spirit in me. I know what the immigrant spirit is, and I'm not afraid to be labeled. I'm not afraid to be called an immigrant because I know I make this country great. I know I stand for democracy. In my country, I was not able to do that. But in this country, I am able to have a voice. And that's what an immigrant is, and I take pride in that. And I want all immigrant women who walk through the doors of the organization that I created to feel home, to feel as they are new Americans, but also to embrace their story, to embrace their identity, to embrace their self of belonging. This is the country we created for all. We work to create this country. We belong. We own it. We have a voice and we have a responsibility to make it better. No matter what anybody is telling us, this is the place where women have a voice. Women from all over the world belong to this place. We come here. We are entrepreneurial. We are risk takers. We are mother. 
We come with sick children. We come with parents that hurt. We leave behind family, friends, careers, life that, that one once was dear to us. We leave everything to embrace this new land of opportunity. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we lose the sense of purpose. And guess what? I was not going to let that get to me. The first thing I wanted to do, and the first thing that I discovered through this journey of immigration, is my renewal, my renewed purpose in life. In Romania, I worked on women's issues. I worked to pass legislation against domestic violence. I've been doing this for about two decades. I didn't think I lost the purpose when I came to this country. But it took me a real life experience, a real transformative experience. It took the life of my son. It took his challenges. It took the lack of language. It took the fact that I did not speak the language, that I did not drive, and that I could not secure a job to save my life or to, to save my family. I had so many letters of rejections that I could have probably written a book on how not to win your first job. <laughs> well, so what I've learned from this experience is that I was not alone. I started to look around me, and I started to look in the communities where I lived. I lived in Silver Spring, Maryland, when we came to the United States. Montgomery College was in my neighborhood. So I joined community college, and this is where you and I share so much love and joy and passion about America. I enrolled to take English as a second language. I was in a program for about six months until my teachers decided that I was able to have enough vocabulary to, to um, make it happen to go out there and, and just do what I was passionate about. I was put in a class the English as a second language with about 90 people. The majority were women. I was fascinated. I wanted to hear their stories. I wanted to hear what brought them to this country and what was the American dream that was keeping them here. And what I've learned, I thought my struggle and my journey was difficult. But those women's journeys were way harder than mine. There are women who came out of refugee camps. They've been raped, they've been abused for years and decades. They were women without husbands. They had kids here. They were paid $5 an hour. And I felt that something had to happen. Something had to take place. Those women were accomplished in their countries. Many of these women had master's degrees and PhDs, and they were artists, musicians, and dancers, and anthropologists, they were storytellers, they were published authors, yet they were so isolated. There was no place under the sun for them to belong. So in those moments of difficulty, of darkness, of lack of language, of lack of way to communicate with you, I was able to find light. I was able to see that I was not alone, that perhaps if I get together with all these women that I just met, and with the millions of women out there in the United States and globally who are displaced, but who want to belong, who have something to contribute to this global economy, Perhaps, and only them, we can become a force. We can take risk. We can be meaningful in our families, in our communities. We can be agents of change. We can be leaders. We can start up revolutions. We can do whatever we want to do. But that place, when I came, it was not here. So from this extraordinary experience, it's a very long journey. But what I took away, what I've learned about purpose, is that there's three things that completes the sense of purpose in one's life. The power of one, the power of love, and the power of gratitude. All these three powers were within me all along as I was struggling to redefine myself, to redefine my voice, 
and to create this community, this platform for women to have a voice. The power of one. The power of one has to do with one's ability to act from a place of oneness. It has to do with one's empathy and compassion and one's power of saving one life. You see, in our world, in our society, there is this pressure that everything has to happen to scale. So we save millions of lives. But how about we rethink impact? How about we think about the power of one? How about we think about one life we can impact today? I see the power of one everywhere. I see the power of one in this room. We heard it throughout the day. I see the power of one in my work every day with women from around the world and with women who are struggling to overcome difficult life circumstances. I see the power of one in a survivor of human trafficking who now makes beautiful jewelry to inspire other young girls to find their purpose in life and not follow the path she followed. I see the power of one in a mother who overcame domestic abuse, who overcame brain cancer, and who now makes beautiful hand quilted aprons to tell her story and to honor the legacy of her family. I see the power of one as far as women in Papua New Guinea, of all places, why did I mention that? I just returned from a training I've done with women in Papua New Guinea, helping them start up businesses and grow their vision and create economic opportunity. I was so inspired by these women. I had no idea what am I going to tell them. I have no idea how am I going to connect with them. But there was no difference. It were, they were women just like you and I. We connected at a human level. I was inspired by the power of one to create a women's chamber of commerce in a country where only three women parliamentarian. They stood out as one voice to create this chamber of commerce to fight for opportunity, economic solutions, and equality for women. I was so amazed. It is the power of one that creates the power of millions. That's how we need to look. Every life has meaning. Every life must be saved. We must do everything we can to save that one life. It is worth your money. If you ever thought who you should give your money this holiday, I have a couple of good organizations to tell you. <laughs> there is so much you and I today, right now, can do to save one life. And perhaps, think about the story of my son. Perhaps that one life, my son, first of all, he has given me my purpose. He's re-given me a place in the universe. But I know my son has a place under the sun. I know he's going to become someone. At the age of 12, my son is representing his school, Montessori, at United Nations. And he is going to be an attorney defending the people's rights, the Amazonas, the indigenous people of Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, I feel so happy. <laughs> he is not an empowered girl, but he's an empowered boy. <laughs> and don't we need this in our lives? Yes. I often hear this conversation on gender only from one side of the story. I believe we have a responsibility as mothers, as women, as leaders, as entrepreneurs to really teach our boys to be empowered and to create equal opportunity to share their power, to share their love, to share the gratitude that we have in our families and in our households, in our communities. It is a major responsibility that I believe it is within us, the women, the mothers, the keepers of the flame. The power of love. Love is the ultimate frontier of the human spirit. I was loved so many times in my life, and I am so loved today. Love is what heals me every day. Love is what healed the past 
and recreated the present. I've been incredibly fortunate to have this experience where I work with women who really share their love with me, where I could love them back. I feel that as a transformative force of life. I feel that as the root of all there is. We all need love in our life. There's nothing we can accomplish without love. And the last power I want to share with you today is the power of gratitude. Gratitude is a way of life. Gratitude is what gives us wings when we forget how to fly. Gratitude creates abundance in our lives. In gratitude, we thrive. Our souls are laughing when they dip their toes in gratitude. Gratitude is my way of living life every day, giving thanks and being gracious and grateful to everything and everyone in my life and part of my journey. Living with gratitude is my way of working to elevate humanity and to continue to inspire my children and to empower women around the world. Thank you.